Hello beloved, it's so special to be able to talk to you. It's um, a daily revelation. It's something that he is growing inside me so I can bring that to your lives inside you that the precious words of our Lord he is alive inside you this is not a teaching this is not something that you never heard before it might be but that's not the purpose of this this is something that when you get it you know that you had that yes it's a yes inside you it's a connection with the inside that's popping up that yes it's the lord it's from him that's me that's him in me this type of words are so alive and he does this inside me all the time trying to bring you so we can walk together bring you with me we started looking at the book of acts and we talked about Saul of Tarsus the future apostle Paul and somehow I was looking at his life and I know there is a dilemma and maybe people that read about him and even in the book of Acts the opinions uh, the jury is still out as far as was he supposed to go to Jerusalem and um, then basically his ministry finished did his ministry finish too early had he not gone to Jerusalem he would have been able to go in the different other trips and reach reach different type of areas and the Lord would have used them and Christianity would have grown much faster he went there, ended up in jail with very limited access on the, on the ship all the way to Rome in a house, very few people. One point he says, I'm alone, only the Lord is with me. Everybody left me. What kind of ministry is that? And some commentators, they say he should have listened to Agabus and to those prophetic words and to the love of the body. It says, don't go to Jerusalem. I think it's fairly clear from uh, what the Lord is speaking and confirming to Paul that he was supposed to go to Jerusalem and he was supposed to end up at Rome yes in chains but was supposed to be in Rome so there are some clear things but looking at what the Lord is doing for us in us maybe you are sitting in a place and you are wondering Lord, what's, what's your plan for my life? And maybe you've been walking with the Lord for a long time. And now you are in, in a place of waiting, waiting for a change, waiting for a miracle, waiting for a new direction. Maybe you just started to walk with the Lord and you are um, trying to find your way this is important to know and as I was reading about the life of Paul this thing came to me it's in Hebrews 3 listen 
Listen very carefully. Therefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, you are partaker of a heavenly calling. Is this your ministry? Is this taking care of church, churches? Is this evangelism? Is this saving souls? Heavenly calling. Let's keep reading. Consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Christ Jesus. The apostle is a pioneer. It's the one sand to open, make a way where there is no way, right? High priest is again someone that has access behind the curtain. It's, it's one that's in a place of ministering straight to the Lord, to God. The highest rank of intercession, if you want. So there is the um, way maker, the apostle, the pioneer, and the high priest, Christ Jesus. Consider this, who was faithful to him who appointed him. Who appointed you? Who appointed Paul? Faithful to the one that appointed you. If men and if organizations and churches and needs of men appointed you, then you are faithful to that. But if the Lord appointed you, you are faithful to Him. And that's it. Faithful to Him. And that's it. That's what matters. As Moses also was faithful in all his house, in the Lord's house. For, the, for this one has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as he who built the house has more honor than the house. Listen to this. And Moses indeed was faithful in all his house, all the Lord's house, as a servant for a testimony of those things which would be spoken afterward. But Christ, as a son, over his own house, whose house we are, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm to the end. I watched a couple of people, you know, that the Lord made me an observer because I can recognize Him. I'm, I'm looking for Him. In the people that talk and people I listen, I'm looking for the Lord. And I listened to one person and one brother had an encounter with the Lord. The Lord changed his life. And I'm saying that I'm so, when I see the Lord, I know him. I recognize him. It's my Lord. But then that brother, as he was uh, so anointed and desired to serve the Lord, went to another ministry and got prayed for and filled with fire and he had some visions and he started a ministry and he was so 
into this ministry. And I realized something. I realized that there was a time when the Lord was just probably offer him to be faithful to himself and nothing else. But because of the need of the people, because of the anointing, the fire, what he felt, the gifts that he felt, he can help people, he can heal people, he can hear the Lord for people. He went and was faithful in the house of the Lord. Do you hear me? Serving the Lord or serving His house. Both are ministers in the house of the Lord, in the field, with the body of Christ, the kingdom, whatever name you, you have for the ministry where you where you operate. Are you serving the kingdom or the king? You are to be faithful to the one that appoints you. If an apostle appoints you, you are faithful to an apostle and you get the reward of an apostle. But if the Lord appoints you, you are faithful to the Lord and you get Him as a reward. You want Him or His ministry? He said, well, can I have them both? <laughs> I think for the priests in the Old Testament, the Lord was the ministry. You know, Aaron's family, they were the priests, and the Levites, the rest of the family, they were servants of the house. They would put things together, they would clean them, they would fill with oil and do this and do that, and they would carry when the tabernacle was, they would carry it. They had to be Levites. I mean, it's like really a, a selected few. But the priests, their only occupation, their only focus was the Lord. They would take things from the people to the Lord. They were focused on Him. <laughs> Jesus is the high priest. Focus on the Father. Few questions. Where are you ser serving from? Moses was faithful in the house, from the house, taking care of the needs of the house. But Lord Jesus. He was over the house as a son, as the one that was absolutely representing, entrusted by the Father with who he was. Are you serving as a son or as a servant? You say, what? We are all serving, yes. There is a son servant and a servant servant. And I'm not talking about the spirit of fear, the law. Um, the servant doesn't stay in the house. No, no, no. This, this is a different uh, topic, right? Because Moses was faithful as a servant he was in the house he stayed in the house right that we're not talking about the heart 
the heart towards God. We are not in fear. And those people that are servants in the house, they are not in fear. They see the need and they serve from those realities. And what are you serving? Serving the realities or the things to come? I would call them the shadows. Right here, he said that um, Moses was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which would be spoken afterward. Things to come. Faithful over that shadow that would be fulfilled in the sun. Are you preparing the way of the Lord? Are you preparing the revival? Are you preparing the coming of the new generation? Or you are the revival? You are the son's generation. This is so important. And you can, you can see the difference. We are living the greatest reality of Christ the Son over the house of the Lord. And what He wants from us is to be faithful to the one that appointed us. He appointed you. Be faithful to Him. And any other loyalties, any other um, requests for help and needs have to be following this faithfulness to the one that appointed you. And if he says, hey, uh, Saul, 14 years, just wait. Just wait. Hey, Paul, I want you to go to Rome. Just write some letters. Because I will do more and for longer time with your letters than you can do in person. I want you to trust me, Paul. I appointed you and you are faithful to me. You hear me? Yes, you do. You're so blessed.